Let us get going. What's up, Goon Squad? It's your boy back again, Jody MF Keith, aka Nola Gold, here with a new Runeterra deck highlight. Yes, today we have a sweet new deck. It's sweet, sweet, sweet with an old, old mustache. That's right, we got the Brom Goat Herder. New set, Call of the Mountain. New mechanics, Invoke. And new gems. We got gems. Gems in here. Not gem like Jim from the gym who owns the gym. We're talking about gems with a G because they're outrageous. Mountain Goat, baby, making the gym. A lot of people look at this card. A lot of people want to laugh. But this goat is not messing around. Basically, gems, the whole big idea of the whole deck is to get a Brahmin play, put gems on it. That's the short story of it all. You get the gems, you put it on the Braum. Braum has power. Braum with power is OP. As expressed in balance patches of the past, when they gave Braum power, they had to take it away. So they gave him power again. We got the gems. Okay. Let us get going. So let's get into the deck list. Yes, Braum's the champion, as mentioned. Does kick teeth whenever he's got the gem on him. But you got to look at Braum as a value engine. He is just going to try and make him a pro to hang out with. Just walk around wagging his mustache around with his gems and just hold it down. Nobody wants to attack him in Braum. Nobody wants to level Braum up. He's just like the hold up, swole up whenever it comes to champions. In this deck, you're not going to win the game with Braum. There are going to be some games where Braum's going to level and you're going to be dunking on him with a bunch of Puros. That's definitely possible. But it's not the main win condition of this deck. It's not even really a win condition. It's just like a time buyer and a challenger that... You could always pick off a blocker to make their blocks bad every turn. And a defensive unit. That's what Braum's really there for. Getting value is what this is. This whole deck is just a big value train that focuses around the Starlet Seer. Who, who goes there? Braum gym interaction. So whenever you mulligan, you're going to want to make sure that you have a Starlet Seer or a Braum in your opener. Other one drops are acceptable. Gift giver. Mountain Goat is great getting the goat. You can get the gems early, which is great. It could also block fearsome units, which is huge. It does have one toughness, which is a low amount of toughness. But generally, if you trade and get a gem, you're just setting yourself up for Braum later. So those are what you're looking for in your opener. Sometimes you'll keep a mentor as well. Not so much against aggressive decks, but against control decks. Mid-range decks, the mentor is nice because the mentor can be used to Pump one of your early drops or follow it up with a Braum. You can pump the Braum on the attack, which is huge. Braum being a 2-7. There's other ways to make this thing a 2-7 as well. Since we're playing the Invoke mechanic, you can find Written in the Stars. Written in the Stars can always find Braum. That's one of the big reasons why we play only Braum and we don't play Tark. Some people are like, oh, we don't play Tark in this deck. You play Tark or you do this targeting. It's like Tark's not winning the game. Braum's not winning the game. <laughs> They're just here to hold it down, and Braum holds it down better than Tark. And if we can play written in the stars, we want to always find Braum. That way, there's no, well, if it's this or that, that's more absolute because we already have a little bit of variance in the invoke mechanic itself. So, if we take a little bit less out of it, that helps. As for closing in this, in this deck, we're just going to run our opponent, you know, rough shot on. Card advantage. We're going to have more card advantage than our opponent because between Solari Priestess picking up a card, Mountain Scar picking up a card, and these are all generating good effects. Pale Cascade went into combat. This is a great combat trick both with uh, Braum and then just keeping things alive. Especially when you have some cheap one drops, you can use a gem and then have Pale Cascade up for its nightfall to be able to draw a card whenever you play it. That's pretty good uh the pale cascade also is great at finishing things off or if they commit a trick to be able to kill your braum you can just pale cascade back that's kind of big targeting your own units we have one arbiter the arbiter gets cheaper for each basically every gym that you played or any spell that you played on your own units as well as uh supporting well we have mentor mentor by itself should make arbiter very cheap this deck's kind of a big waiting game. You always look at the board position whenever you play this deck. Try and find out if you're in a better position than your opponent. Pass, pass back. The pass button is so integral to being successful in this game that 
being able to play cheap units that affect the board in a meaningful way. Think Star Shepherd. It's an O3. This card's not that good in O3, but if you have something that's damaged and you're going to use a one mana gem, this thing starts growing. Same, you know, you'll be able to trade your one drop for their four drop. That's kind of big. Also, Braum just attacking his regeneration at the end of turn levels up your star sh uh, shepherds. And basically, we're just going to be grinding our opponent out with the card advantage. Now, the problem is, and you see this often with invoke decks, is that these bodies are kind of weak. Three mana for a one, two, not that strong. Four mana for a two, three, not that strong. But they're usually picking up spells that are impactful or more impactful units, which is huge. Same thing with the Behold the Infinite. But we can mitigate some of that by getting an early Starlet Seer because if we're playing gems or spells or, you know, Sunburst or the removal spells that we got off the Invoke, then we're going to start drawing these cards with reasonable stats. We also have Mentor and gems to give them more front side to discourage your opponent from attacking because you can offer trades. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to like clog the game up, get as much value as we can, find good trades when we can, buff our Braum with the gym so we start taxing our opponent's units as hard as we can. If the Braum dies, it's okay. Don't be scared, oh, my Braum's gonna die. Not that big a deal. We're just trying to stay up on board. If you're already ahead, then you don't have to make those greedy plays. If you're not ahead, then sometimes you got to make some greedy plays. And that's okay. Just knowing where you are in the game is very important. And eventually it'll lead to a star shaping for big, fat, celestial, fatty, or the spell that'll pump everything plus two, plus two. So that's what you're looking to close the game out with. The game closer, if you play star shaping, it's played in a lot of decks, which will vary depending on what you see in the invoke, and then also what's best for the particular matchup, whether you need something with spell shield, whether you need something with elusive, whether you need something that's not gonna die, whether you need something right now, or you can wait till turn 10. These are the things to look at when you star shaping. It's gonna be like the last card before you start closing the game, the star shaping. Also, this is a spell. Hush is great too, especially late game, because boards will be completely stacked on both sides, and then your opponent will probably have some big punishing effect whenever they push with everything, and the Hush can really blow them out. Take out all the elusives, take out the spell shields, cast the Hush, 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 shh, 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 shh. hit them with it four times, no big deal. Also, if you have Starlet Seer or multiple Starlet Seers in play, then the Hush is gonna be pumping the top of your deck pretty high. And when you're pumping the top of your deck, this is very important, you end up with cheap gift givers, and you know, you get Star Shepherd or Mountain Goat, like two mana, seven five and that's just big same thing with the star, uh, star shepherd it's not uncommon after a mentor of the stones to really have played four or five spells and got a big plus five plus five on a cheap unit having it on a cheap unit is huge which is why all of our units cost four or less and that's because in the mid the late mid game you'll see players with six mana removal spells you see them here sunburst Sometimes you get the obliterate, you get the uh, comet or whatever it is, the meteor off the invoke, and you'll have that as a big removal spell. You'll have like a multiple hush turn you're trying to set up, and those things require mana. And so being able to develop your board state without having to spend a bunch for your finisher is really huge whenever you have a one mana, five, six gift giver. And then you can do a soft pass that's actually like a big commitment to the board that your opponent's gonna have to react to with their big play. Say, think like Leviathan. So they come with their A drop and then you're like, boom, spend my six mana, remove it. So they, you, they, you won't get trapped in the mid range aspect of the invoke. Cause that's one problem where the invoke, if the Mountain Squire is not out there and you're having a, to uh, spend five, six, seven mana for spells, then it could take up your whole turn where the Starlet Seer does make that a little easier because all your units are cheap. This deck performs very well against uh, aggro. It's really good against Bajwater in particular because of how much healing we have and the fact that Braum is just a beast against Bajwater. It's also really resilient to other Mountain Scryer, Solari Priestess decks because unless they get an early Constellation where they get plus two plus two on everything, your Braum with gems is gonna actually be eating their board alive for the most part. And being able to pick off their Mountain Scryer 
and then you have a mana advantage by having your own Mountain Scryer, you'll be able to play that game a lot easier than Targon Allegiance decks that don't play a Challenger. Other good matchups, I would say the best is probably like TF Swain. Again, you do have to play it correct. You want to make sure you're playing around the uh, Make It Rains. You want to play it very slow. Don't be too aggressive because it'll be easy for them to, to counter heavy aggression with like a TF. Try and make good value plays and you'll outgrind them very easily. And then if you use your invokes to pick up obliterates, then you'll never get caught off guard by a Leviathan Swain combo. You have enough heal and enough board presence that it's not going to be too much trouble staying in the game. Uh, sometimes they'll be able to chip through some damage, but you can usually catch a star shaping or two, especially if you're holding up that six mana, five mana for the obliterate on the Leviathan. You could also use a Behold the Infinite. Sometimes you get the silence off of that because if you silence the Leviathan, it doesn't do anything. That's kind of big as well. Just the card selection that has been presented in Targon makes this deck, which can keep a good board position throughout most of the game, actually come up with the tools to be able to beat just about anything. Uh, on my last push for Masters, I ended up going 36 and 9 with this deck, which I, I felt like it overperformed really, but I didn't have much expectation for it whenever I first put this deck together. I have made a couple small changes while I was on the stream, but Overall, I would say that this is about where you want the deck. The Behold the Infinite seems kind of weak, but it's a nice little gamble card in the middle. You could possibly play Entreat, and it's something that I thought about playing, but why I have strayed away from Entreat over something like Behold or uh, Guiding Touch is the, the fact that you have to look at this deck as not, I need Braum to win, I just need Braum to hold it down. And if they have to spend six mana on a middle turn to remove a Braum, then that was actually good for us, especially whenever he already made a Puro and maybe even took out one of their units. So we already got a lot of tempo, and now they're giving away more tempo by making a play like that. So not that big a deal. You can get another Braum later, but then you should be pumping up the board. And if they're focusing on that, they're not focusing on your Starlet Seer or possibly your Star Shepherd, which is going to be getting out of hand, or your Mountain Scryer which is about to turn up because all your spells are going to be cheaper. So Behold the Infinite, I like it because we're playing Mountain Scryer. And if we played Entreat, the reason why I'm not thinking Entreat is because it is an Allegiance card, the Mountain Scryer. So adding more Freyord cards might not be the best idea. Also, you can invoke for Written in the Stars, potentially off of Solari Priestess or any of the other ones, except for Star Shaping. And that'll be good for... Finding Braum, getting him down cheap, cheap 2 7 Braum. Braum's great with Mentor of the Stones. This is like one of the best cards in the deck right here, Mentor of the Stones. Really, you're fine with the dying, you're fine with the supporting as well. It doesn't matter because you make such good use of the gems between Braum, growing your Star Shepherd. If you got a Purr out there, that's got Overwhelm. Arbiter's got Overwhelm. Sometimes you'll have a big elusive that you got. So the gems are going to be very useful even if it dies. Triggering your Starlet Seer to pump the top of your deck. The uh, making combat look weird for your opponent to further stall the game out while you continue to gain more and more card advantage and resource advantage. So, overall, you don't care. Obviously, attacking and making the Braum 2 7 is the stone awesome, but uh, Mentor of the Stones, you don't care. If he dies, he dies, they say, right? So, Either way, the Mentor is great. And that's why it's also important to play so many early drops. We have a full 6-2 and a full 6-1 drop sweep. That's why I definitely wanted another 1 drop. One card that I thought about playing was the 1 drop that invokes for 3 or less, uh, the Sketcher. But I didn't really like the idea of pitching something. It, it would have to be a gem. And then the thing is our gems are pretty valuable in this deck. So I will, didn't really want to go for it. It's a 1-1 body. This is a 0-3, but it's more defensively static, right, as a 0-3 compared to a 1-1. The 1-1 doesn't really impact the board. And anything you discard is probably not going to be as good as 
anything you discard is not going to be worse than what you get off of a sketcher in, in, in a lot of situations. So I, I think the Star Shepherd's fine just to passively play the Star Shepherd, play the Braum, put the pressure on your opponent, let them feel like things are getting out of hand, and then they'll play into what you have. That's really the idea of this deck. And then you could start making pushes with the Braum in the uh, late mid game, which is nice. This deck can go long. You can go long with Asol even. Picking up uh, Obliterates. You can use Hush to uh, take off Spell Shields and then come up with a big Invoke Celestial card that can wreck them. Or you can go wide on them as well. Suicide of Brahmin to an Asol and then push a bunch of damage with your buffed up units from Starlet Seer. The many games I've played and games you'll see in the YouTube videos coming out this weekend where you just line up six units versus six units and you're like come with it and uh you know you win a lot of combats pale cascade is one of the best cards not only in this deck but in this set plus two plus one usually saves braum and if you save braum he's got regenerate so that's huge also giving two more power to braum and tight spots the turn you play it if you don't have access to a gym pale cascade can usually take something out draw you a card start churning through your deck, and then eventually finishing the game off with star shaping. Don't forget that these heals could also be used, a common removal spell, Ravenous Flock, that's one of the easiest ways for decks to get rid of uh, Braum, swing decks to get rid of Braum. So if you save up the mana to heal, be patient with this deck. Don't think you gotta spend all your mana every turn, just make good value plays. Don't be scared to pass, your opponent uses their mana, you use your mana. Sometimes you gotta get down early and often with the goat, Nothing wrong with that either, but Brom's going to herd the goat to victory. So I hope you enjoyed this deck, and uh, let me know what you think about this description of this deck. If you have any questions about this deck, uh, this is like one of the first type of videos where I just talk about a deck and, 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 it's, and without being an hour. Last time I did like the casino deck, and I went way, way in depth, and it was an hour long. This one's going to be a little shorter, just introduce you to it. Feel free to uh, import it, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Uh, I read all the comments, so I'm looking for anything. Any any suggestions, comments, complaints, send them to somebody else. <laughs> but all in all, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will be... Overall, I... Oh, that's not it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and again, if you did, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll be aggravated every time I put up a video. There will be more coming this weekend. If you like this deck, there will be more videos about this deck this weekend, and I hope you enjoyed. One love, baby. Paya!